Today's tutorial is yet another Photoshop plugin by Joel Chinchilla. Today we're looking at the Quick Mask Pro panel. Roll the intro. Let's get a few important things out of the way. A lot of you, myself included, when I first got this software, thought, brilliant, I don't have to make selections anymore. However, that's not the case. The purpose of this software is purely to separate the foreground and the sky. That's it. It's not going to make individual selections of, say, different building facades or uh, a tree trunk or something like that. That's not what this software is for. It's to separate your foreground and your sky. Now that's out of the way, let's move on. In this video, I'm going to talk you through several examples of images, some of them easy, some of them a bit more difficult. The Quick Mask Pro panel is a powerful tool for you to use, but it's not magic. If you physically can't separate, say, a building and a sky in your image, and you couldn't physically make a manual selection, then the software's not going to be able to do that either. So you pick and choose which images you use this panel for. And another piece of housekeeping, this plugin is not creating luminosity masks. You'll see that because Joel has also added luminosity masks into the Quick Mask Pro panel. Diving straight into Photoshop then. So once you've installed it, if it's not already available, if you click on Windows, go to Extensions and click Quick Mask Pro, then it will appear over here. So you can see this doesn't actually have too many buttons. You don't have to be overwhelmed. This is actually quite an easy panel to be using. Using this image as an example, let me show you what we're trying to achieve using the panel. What we are trying to achieve is a selection of the sky with a hard mask. And the term hard mask is nothing to do with how sharp the edges are. It doesn't have any tones in it. A hard mask is white and black, simple as that. Let's start off with a nice easy image. This is a landscape photograph. If you're interested, it's Black Church Rock, which is in North Devon. Let's get into it. This is quite an easy example in my opinion because you've got a clear distinction, a clear definition between the foreground and the sky. You've got nice sharp edges. So just like Joel's Artisan Pro panel, these at the top are just shortcuts for things that are already in Photoshop. They're just there to help speed up your workflow. The workflow works top to bottom. Now to speed things up, what I've done is I've generated all of the luminosity masks. Every time you click on this, it will create three. It, this one will create three, this one will create three, and this one will create three. If you go to your channels, you can see the LK123 is low key, and then low mid, this one, HM123 is mid high, and then high key, HK12 and three. You can see that the high key images here just aren't going to be suitable. What we're looking for is clear definition. We need a black sky and a white foreground. You can see here that this is too similar in tone, so it's not getting clear distinction between the sky and the foreground. So on that basis, none of the high keys or any of the mid highs are any good for separating the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Right, now we've got the low keys and the low mids to work with. So which one of these masks gives you the best separation between the foreground and the sky? I think that the low mid one does the best job. You can see with the low keys, it's making the foreground dark and I don't want that. I want the foreground to be white, the sky to be black. So I think our best option is low mid one. So it's a bit like the matrix, you've got to figure out what you're looking for, but it's this line here that you're looking at which one gives the best separation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that sky, just so that I don't get confused between what layer I'm working on. And just to save a bit of space, I'm going to delete those. There you go, so this is my starting position and I'm going to work on the actual channel to refine this. So now that I've got my base mask, I'm going to click on quick refine mask because what I want to do is I want to make the sky darker to black and I want to make the foreground to white. So how do I do that? The fill white and the fill black does exactly what it says on the tin. If you were to select a rectangle here, click that and it will just, it will make it black. You do that for large areas where you're not near the edges. And you could take a selection of all of that and just fill white. But the areas where the black and white cross over, we need to be a bit more refined about it. So what you do is you can use your marquee tool. So if I'm going to just create a selection over the top there and then go to strong black, you could see there that darkened the sky, but it left the highlights alone. Just go over that, hit strong black. There we go. You see that? 
and essentially what this is doing the quick mask pro is almost replicating a brush on the overlay mode and therefore when you're brushing over the sky it just tackles the darks and it leaves the highlights alone and the objective is because you could use super soft or soft black or medium black you want to darken the sky in as fewer passes as possible if you use the more subtle buttons here uh, multiple times what that's going to do is slowly erode away at the quality of this line here so Joel's advice is do that in as fewer passes as possible so you start off with a strong black there you go okay so you can see how quick and easy it was to make the sky black now we're going to do exactly the same with the whites so the marquee tool again do that strong white it's just where the two meet one another that is the most important part select that fill white fill that with white a few stubborn bits fill those there you go within a few minutes I've got a good selection of the sky and then you can hit Control I to invert that once you got to this point if you go down you're still on quick refine mask if you go to the bottom load and optimize mask if you hit default drop that down to the channel that you're on which I've called sky hit OK and what that does is it creates the feathering and it optimizes it that just makes sure you don't have a really sharp edge and you avoid halos this way so then you're going to go select Save selection, sky optimized. And now you can load sky optimized and you've got your sky right there. There you go, that was a nice easy image to start with. Nice separation between the foreground and the sky, easy. Let's up the difficulty, next image. Okay, here's another example. This photograph was taken by my good friend Pablo. Uh, thank you for letting me use this image, Pablo. Now the purpose of this is that we've got an overcast sky and it's very similar in tone to the underside of this bridge. Uh, this is the science park in Valencia if you're curious and you've also got some buildings which are similar tone to the sky so let's see if we can create a selection of the sky okay so I'm gonna go to base mask low mid and this is what we've got some quite good separation with that that one's looking good low mid separate out the sky okay and let's concentrate on this tower here so we'll go strong white the strong white. Okay, and you can see around here, you see you would never manually select around all of this stuff, but the mask has just made all of these selections for you. So you've got a bit of grey here, so I've got a soft black, maybe one more. There you go, look at that for a selection. You would never select all of this manually. And what we've got here is the top of the handrail here is very similar to the tone of the sky. From here, I made a manual selection of all the handrails around here and I ended up with this. So if you zoom out, you can see that's the complete selection. And although you think um, I've got to combine this with some manual selections, there's still a massive time saver because all of this happening down here there's no way that you would make these selections manually. So there's still, even if you have to combine this with multiple masks or manual selections with the Quick Mask Pro panel, it's definitely going to save you some time. Plus, time aside, you just can't create selections like this manually. As you can see, where you've got an image and the foreground and the sky are starting to get close to one another, the software is going to struggle a bit, so you have to help it out. Sometimes that might mean merging multiple masks. Sometimes you might need to supplement the luminosity mask with a manual selection using, say, the pen tool. What you've got to do is you've just got to build up a repertoire of different skills. So you've got luminosity mask, you've got the quick mask pro, you've got manual selections, you've got outsourcing them to the pro image editors, you've got all of these tools and you think for this image this is the appropriate tool to use. One thing that I'm not going to cover in this video is how to combine multiple base masks or multiple luminosity masks or combining them with manual selections. I'm just going to skim over that because this is an introduction to the panel and those videos would take much much longer but Using this panel, if you're confronted with an image where you cannot create a selection of the sky using just one base mask, it can be done. It is quite advanced and I'm not going to cover that in this introduction tutorial. One more example, this is another photograph of Pablo's. Thank you for lending this to me, Pablo. 
Uh, you can see here I've already worked on this so I'm kind of backtracking showing you what I did. So you've got another image which has got an overcast sky and some similar tones, clouds and the dome in this instance were very very similar and the handrails again very very similar to the sky. So let me show you the problems that I had. These are the masks that it's just created. I think that that one might be my best starting point so let's go with that. Okay let's try and darken the sky first so we go strong black you can see instantly it's darkening the dome too much and you've just lost the definition entirely so this mask doesn't work on the dome but we might be able to salvage that let's grab that lot go okay, strong white I'm just doing this quickly for the demonstration keeping away from the edge just go in and then fill that with white. Right, this is a good opportunity for me to show you what the advanced refine mask does. So let's click on that. We've got a base mask which is low mid. The intricate cables, the, the metal on this Harris fencing on the bridge is a, a lighter tone than that. We go into advanced refine mask and then we go to a higher one and then we click create mid high. It's going to create more masks. Now think of this as being very similar to the restore feature which is in the Artisan Pro panel. Now if we go back to our sky channel, what I'm going to do is make a crude selection around here and I'm going to recover some of the highlights from a different channel, not a different layer because we're not in the layers, we're in the channel. But I'm working on the, the sky channel, my essentially my master selection. Staying in the advanced refine mask, if I click on one of these, what it does, the software then assesses all of these and says, Ben would like strong white, so let's use this one. It makes that decision for you. So if I hit strong white, that's too strong. Okay, but you can see it's bringing out highlights from probably one of these. So I'll undo that. I'll just go super subtle white. There you go. You can see that the detail is in there. Like I said at the beginning, this, this is not a photograph that you would use for the Quick Mask Pro panel. Uh, this is as far as I got, so you can see here, this is the sky selection. Now this is pretty good, but to get here, I've made some manual selections. I selected the dome manually. I selected this spire manually. Let's see here. It's just in there, but it looks like the sky. Um, and the biggest problem with this is that the, the top of the handrail is so similar to the sky that this would all require manual selections. And finally, we've got a few other buttons that we haven't talked about. The luminosity masks, if you've got the Artisan Pro panel, these are exactly the same as they are in the Artisan Pro panel. No difference whatsoever. Joel's just put them in here because he's generous. So that's the luminosity masks. And then you've got tools. These are just shortcuts. You've got the marquee tool, you've got the brush tool, lasso tool, you've got undo and you've got redo. And then you've got these at the bottom. And that is the Quick Mask Pro panel. So if you're interested in buying the plugin, go to Joel's website, bwvision.com, and then you go to the software, and then you click on the links. I have a suggestion for you, Joel, if I may. I've made a mock-up in Photoshop. Let me show you. Okay, Joel, take a look at this. I think you're going to like it. You'll see I've added a new button here. I've made it quite large because I think this will get a lot of use. Um, I've even matched the colors and the font and everything. You're welcome. So I'll show you what it does if you just click here. That will happen very quickly. Let me tell you what happened in the background. First of all, it made all the selections that I wanted. It didn't ask me which selections. It just got on with it. Next up, it created the vision for the image. I didn't have to think about where I wanted the light to come from or the focal point or anything. That just dealt with it. You've got to hit that magic button. And then finally, it used the Artisan Pro panel, so you will need that as well, to create the depth to the image. I don't think I'm asking too much. So I think I've done all the hard work for you. I've, I've designed the size of the button, I've matched the font, I've sorted out the colors for you. All you need to do now is just do all the scripting in the background and I think we've got a winner. Vote down below if you think Joel should make a magic button for his plugin, saving us all a bunch of time. Thank you, Joel. That's all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't seen Joel's three hour tutorial on the Artisan Pro panel, I'll link that in the end screen on this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.